don't want to grow too much here, but that's good. Um, so you make it look so uh, easy. When you wrap it around, just go around and just hold it like that. So you're not worrying about the roots and you're not worrying yeah. about the ends. It's always working away from the face. Yeah, that one's good, look. Hey, we're here to interview Lee Stafford. What, the hairdresser? The hairdresser to the stars. Oh, hi Lee. Hello guys, how are you all doing? Let's go and have a chat Lee. Cool, let's go on. So when did you begin to style your hair? Um, well I started when I was 16. I um, I never had a burning ambition to be a hairdresser when I was at school. You know, I wasn't running around the playground going, I want to be a hairdresser, you know. Uh, I was playing football and chasing girls at school, you know. Uh, but I left school without any qualifications whatsoever. You know, I didn't get any, and um, and I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. You know, and uh, and it was my mum. I was sitting in the salon with her one day. And she just said to me, "Yo, Lee, what about hairdressing?" She said, "You know, you hate getting your hands dirty. You hate the cold. You love women. You love fit, <laughs> You know, what about hair? You know, and uh, and I thought, yeah, why not? You know, I'll give it a go." So that passion of yours did it spark from when you were sixteen? I loved it. You know, I was very passionate about it, and I was very passionate about getting good at it. You know. Because uh, the thing was, you see, I started in my mum's dining room uh, and I built a huge clientele purely on rapport. You know, most of my clientele back then was guys that had this short back and sides and a, and a quick, very similar to what the fashion is. Mm. I'm old enough now, it's come round <laughs> again, the fashion, you know. And, um, and I learned how to do the short back and sides. It wasn't very good, but I, I blagged it, especially with my rapport with people. It wasn't until I opened up my first salon that I, I, I really thought, well, I've got to start learning how to do this properly. What was it like when you won your award in 98, winning the Men's British Hairdressing Award? It got me noticed, you know, because, you know, you could be really talented uh, and really working hard and really passionate, all of them things, but people have got to notice you and you've got to do something that gets you out there. And, and I was prepared. I'd spent 15 years, you know, consumed in hairdressing, loving it, but consumed in it. You know, every day I'd wake up thinking, well, I've got to be better today than I was yesterday. And that's what I did for 15 years. I just concentrated on that inch every single day, just trying to get that bit better of what I did. And that's, that's realistic, isn't it? You know, becoming Vidal Sassoon overnight is unrealistic. It's not gonna happen, you know. Can you learn creativity or does it come from within? I'm a great believer that it's 99% it's perspiration and 1% inspiration. inspiration. You've got to become a great technician first. You know, once you, become, once you can paint and copy the Mona Lisa perfect, then you've got, then you can become creative e more easily. Because you have an idea and you could, you've got the, the technique and the ability to bring them, that creativity alive. When did you deem yourself successful? I felt, you know, I felt successful when I opened up my first shop, you know. And I felt successful when I got my first graduated Bob right on both sides. It's all about, you know, loving what you do and enjoying what you do and feeling good about it. You're, a, you're successful if you're on the right path and you're feeling it and you're enjoying it. So take my friend John Frieda. John Frieda sold his brand for 600 million US dollars. I mean, probably the most successful financial hairdresser of our time ever. And I read an article uh, about John and uh, it really touched me because he said that when he started as an assistant, you know, dog's body assistant, getting paid very little money for long hours, you know, he took great pride in all the menial jobs in the salon, whether it was folding the towels, he made sure his towels were the best folded towels in the salon. When he was sweeping the floor, it was the best swept floor around. I mean, all the jobs that he did as an assistant, all the menial jobs, he took great pride in. So he's shone, he's shone. And when Leonard, who he was working for at the time, and it was Leonard, so soon in the day. Now, when Leonard was going on all these, you know, Vogue cover shoots, you know, who did he take to assist him? You know, he took the guy from the salon that was folding the towels the best. And How did you cope under pressured conditions like the Brit Awards? Yeah, I'm pretty good under pressure, to be quite honest, yeah. You know, I always, always try to take a deep breath, breath and, uh, and try to be as calm as I can. And I always try to speak to people and I'd want to be spoken to. I can't understand people that start talking to people in a disrespectful way because they're losing it or getting under pressure or whatever it is. I mean, 
you know, there's no excuse for that. So you've had a lot of success. Is there any time you felt like giving up? I've never ever felt like giving up. And don't get me wrong, there's been plenty of situations where I didn't get that graduated bob right on both sides <laughs> and I've felt crap, you know what I mean? Or I've done a haircut that people didn't like or, or a show didn't go, a, a million and one things, you know what I mean? But when I do my coaching sessions around the world, we high five mistakes. Every time someone makes a mistake, we give them a big <laughs> high five. We celebrate it. We celebrate all the mistakes, you know, so it's not about giving up when you make a mistake. You, know, you celebrate it, you learn from it, and you just move forward. You've been on a lot of TV shows. What one did you gain a lot of experience from or affected your life the most? Well, I think the first TV show I ever got, I took over Nicky Clark on this morning. That first gig that I got on telly, you know, again, really changed my life because that kind of opened the door to Boots and my product range. I'd have never had that unless I'd have got that exposure. So what did you gain from being on The Secret Millionaire? I was always someone that was very guilty of um, crossing the other side of the road when I'd heard that someone had had some terrible news. Whatever that news may be. Not because I didn't care, but I just didn't know what to say to someone. What I learnt was is that the first thing you do is you just step up and pick up the phone and say, you know, how are you? I've, I've heard about the news. You know, and you listen. You know, you empathise. And if you don't know what to say, it's okay to say, look, I really don't know what to say to you. Mm -hmm. Or it's okay to say, that's terrible, what are you going to do? How would you suggest a young person gets into hairdressing? Seek out the best people that you can find in that profession. And whatever it takes, if you have to work for them for nothing, for three months, six months, then just do it. Because then you're going to get all the right teachings, you're going to get all the right contacts, you know, you're going to, you're just going to, you're just going to get such a run up the ladder. And you know what, the right mentors out there, if you approach them, you know, honestly, passionately, you know, with the right research about them, you know, bug them enough if you had to, <laughs> you know, they, they'd all take you on. Well, thanks for that and for judging up my hair. <laughs> Welcome, pleasure. So what I do, I do a high five when it's a mistake and we do a big tens when it's a success. So <laughs> the big tens are success, high fives for mistakes. <laughs>